All right. Good weekend. What did it be? 9-11 and maybe finishing up Staterberger's story? Good news, Eskos. <coughs> Thancre de Noriange has finished the tour of Garlemont and on their way back here, even as we speak. As we still haven't heard anything on the towers from the Alliance, I'm hoping they might be able to shed some lights on things. They are due to arrive any moment now. Let's see, let's see what they have to say, eh? Ah, welcome in, party. I needn't have gone through the trouble, but from my here, you've been more than busy enough as it is. Honestly, I might have waited for me to return before discovering a cure for tempering. As it is, I can't even pretend to have been to have been involved. Well, it is our cons to any consolation. I myself a little more than a spectator. The lion's share of the credit goes must go to Ali Day. Graha and Essigos. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Uh, the, I didn't do that much either. I, I, I was, I, I was a Darren boy, essentially. As you may well also have heard, though, it hasn't all been tales of triumph. Just as we're taking steps towards finally addressing the primal threat, a pile of fresh problems landed on our lap. Anyway, it's good to have you back, though I can't help noticing that b you were one Orianger short of the scouting party. You haven't lost him, have you? Oh, I couldn't lose him if I tried, and if I did, and I did try, repeatedly, but no, he decided to linger in Almigo to apprise Rabon and the others of how the, the land lies in Garlemov. Then mayhap you would do the same for us. Indeed, it is just as Lee said. Worse, in fact, devastation as far as the eye could see. Never and the third, however, are notable, are notable by their absence. Might they have met their end at the hands of Zenos and Van Daniel? Perhaps, or perhaps they simply lost the will to fight. You see, the capital has been plunged into a deathly silence, with no, ex with one exception, the Imperial Palace. It was a busy place before the war, but it is even busier still, with throngs of soldiers and civilians working their day and night to rebuild, or rather, transform it. Transform it? Into what? That is a difficult question to answer. The construction is vast and unsettling to behold, like something of a nightmare. According to Orianger, certain aspects of its design are clearly devised by the, with the manipulation of ether in mind. Magitech, in other words. Yet, as a nerve in his said edifice was, there was nothing next to the site of its builders. They swarmed the place like so many insects working with nearly a word exchanged between them. No one overseeing construction, no one barking orders. It was as if they were possessed or tempered. We m wanted to investigate more closely, but given our suspicions, it seemed wiser not to take the risk. Hmm. If Daniel could bind Bahamut to his will, might he have done the same to the people of Garlemont? Whatever the truth may be, his information is certain to prove valuable. You have our thanks. Well, be sure to sa save some for Orianje, which remi reminds me, I have a message from Alamigo. Rabon is hosting a meeting to discuss the latest findings on the towers, and he requested our presence. And why not leave that to us? You must be wary from your mission. No, no, I'm fine. These towers have been on my mind since I first spied one on the way back. I'm keen to get to the bottom of this. Uh, in that case, I shall stay... In Stay and begin looking into another matter, as I promised Kryle. We would not all we need not all attend. Well then, I suggest the rest of us make our way to Alamigo forthwith. The sooner we leave, the more time we have to speak to Orange before the meeting.
off to the Alamegan quarter. I forgot to top off my beverage. My friends, much and more have I heard of your travails in our absence. Heartened am I to see you all hail and whole. As are we to see you safely returned from your mission, Lord Angers. I trust Thancred made you feel welcome. Well, well, isn't it Alphano and his merry band? Oh, well, well, Alphano and his merry band. I knew who it was. Made. Orenvold, what are you doing here? When we spoke via Link Pearl, you told me you were away on a mission. I know who's to say this isn't part of it. Enough about that. It's good to see you looking so similar. I thought you'd grown a bit taller after a whole year in another world, but apparently not. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint. When my soul may be a year y year older, my body has hardly aged. As you are very well aware, and may I remind you that we Ellison are known to be late bloomers, especially in terms in terms of our height. Not by words, the day will come when I have when even great aurochs such as yourself will crane your neck to meet my eye. Ah, twas not until my twentieth summer that I myself outgrew my boyish proportions. The Mumbrida towered over me, nonetheless. Mumbrida was also a rugged in, so... They're usually automatically taller. Unvolved brings out the best in Alpha and Odicity. They see, both seem so easy in each other's company. So must endearing. So what exactly brings you here? Oh, for Dola mostly. We need to go over a few things before we set out. Set out? Wait, does that have something to do with the towers? Eh? What gave you that impression? Actually, tell me later. We've got a meeting to do. go to. I'll see you afterwards, after all. Right? Fadola is going with him. That must mean. My apologies. As Arunvald rightly pointed out, we have a meeting to attend. Let us be at it. Me in the back being like, I don't want to go to a meeting. I think this has... Ere we begin, I would like to offer my gratitude to Masters Thancred and Urianger. It is no small feat to infiltrate the Imperial capital and live to tell the tale, much less in times of civil war. Thanks to them, we may plot our course in full knowledge of how the winds blow in Garlemald. Full glad are we to have been of service. But, verily, such dangers as we did encounter pale into insignificance next to those faced by our comrades. An Asian, armed with the might of Bahamut, bent on bringing about the final days. Theatrix. He sought only to make a show of the power at the Telephoroi's disposal. But since then we have seen no sign of this fun Daniel or his worm. And while we've done what we can to bolster our defenses, there's no telling where he might strike next. Whenever and wherever it may be, we must use the intervening time to learn more of our enemy. Twas with this in mind that we dispatched scouts to investigate the towers.
Our advance party took longer than expected to return. And when they did, they tried to kill us. Luckily, I'd seen that sort of thing before, and we were able to restrain them before they did any harm. Then it was just a matter of letting the Porksies do their work. Are you saying they were tempered? Once they'd come back to their senses, they told us everything they could. It seems that just as they were getting close to the tower, they heard an ear-splitting roar. And that was the last thing they remembered. But what worries me most is what they were saying right before they attacked. Glory be to Garlemont. The Tempered have heretofore ever been thralls to primal entities. Yet these hapless souls were compelled to accept a nation as the object of their devotion. This calleth into question all that we know of the condition. Would that the unsettling news ended there. Alas, there is more. Following the earlier reports of missing Amalja, we have learnt that other beast tribes have suffered similar losses. And we now have reason to believe that the abductions are connected to the appearance of the towers. Our scouts sighted black-garbed figures leading shackled Ixel in the direction of the tower in Dravania. The Temple Knights were able to intercept them before they could reach their destination, liberating the Ixel and apprehending their captors, each of whom was found to be equipped with Garlean arms and armor. So the Empire is the common thread. With the support of Xenos, it seems likely that Van Daniel has rallied a faction of the splintered Garlean army to the banner of the Tolophoroi. Lord Hien reached the same conclusion when I shared our findings with Doma. The plan had been to march on Garlemald from the east and west in order to force a peace treaty. But the situation has changed. Dealing with the threat of the towers must come first. Given the nature of the enemy and the proven risk of tempering, I could think of few suitable candidates to aid in this task. But I am confident in my choice. What? Resistant to primal influence as they are, they can investigate the towers without fear of being turned. We are glad to put our gifts to use, Commander. Gifted or not, going behind enemy lines remains a perilous undertaking. But we must know more if we're to strike back at our foe. I'm counting on you. If it would give us the upper hand, I'd do it a hundred times over. We won't let you down. That concludes the briefing. You two, make ready and join your escort. Are you certain about this, Arunvald? I am. Come on, let's talk outside.
We need to fix this up. Uh, check out what Fortola and Elfin are saying. It's small talk you have to look at elsewhere. I accept that numbers can prove a hindrance in infiltrating our enemy territory, but it is essentially two. Now, it's out in the open. I don't have to keep it under my proverbial the hat anymore. So you know, I've already gone through all the formalities at the Rising Stones. Made sure to inform Jamaldver and Vmar at Ralga's Reach as well. Arenvold, I admire your enthusiasm. But this is far more dangerous than anything you have done before. I know the risks. And I also know what's in store if we don't stop Fan Daniel from carrying out his plan. With this power of mine, I can make a difference. If I stood idly by, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And you, Fudola? Is this what you want? What are you asking me for? It's not like I have any say in the matter. Don't pretend. We both know Commander Eldin gave you a chance to refuse. And you didn't. <clears throat> so the Empire's finished, is it? But that's what they're all saying. That the great and glorious Garlemald slit its own throat. And now, from out of its twitching carcass, crawls the Telophoroi with bloody Xenos at its head! I fought for Garlemald. Killed for Garlemald. What was I part of? I need to know. Whatever it is, I need to know. Very well. If your hearts are set on this, I shall not stand in your way. If you've finished with your touching display of camaraderie, I have a question. Which tower are you planning to investigate, exactly? Well, the one in Girabani is said to be tightly guarded. It's patrol after patrol out there, apparently. We'd be spotted before we got anywhere near it. Which is why we've set our sights on the one in Pagalthan instead. There shouldn't be anything like as many Imperials to worry about down there. Even so, I doubt the local Amalja will look kindly on it if they catch you sneaking around in their territory. Fordola and I had a chance to learn the lie of the land in our previous forays there. 
We might still find trouble, but at least we won't lose our way. Well, we'd best not keep them waiting any longer. Mayhap when all of this is over, we could take another trip to Loxeld. I would have you know I've become a rather capable swimmer since our last visit. Ha! <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. But, to be fair, getting into deep water does seem to be a scion's lot in life. Take care, eh? Yeah, not sure if it's a ro romance or a romance. One Probably more of a romance. It means a lot, you know. You come in with me. I'll still owe you for saving my skin, don't I? Can't return the favor if I'm not there. I dare say you'll get your chance before long. That Van Daniel sounds like a tricky customer. Too much for the likes of me, anyway. But we both know I'd just be another soldier if it weren't for my gift. And I need to be a damn sight more than that given what's coming. I realize I can't hold a candle to a hero like the Warrior of Light or Alfino, for that matter. He might look like he's 12, but he's seen more action than most people see in a lifetime. No, the fact is I'm nothing like them and maybe I never will be. But I'll be damned if I don't try. They're counting on me. On us. So let's give it our all. He does not want for conviction. That much is certain. So let us have faith in him. Him and Fordola both. While they see to the towers, I would attend to another task. Chasing down this lunar Bahamut. Ah, oh, bloody thing. Can you hear me? It's Tataru. Oh, I'm happy to say we've managed to find Estinian. And I'm sorry to say he went running off again the moment we told him about Bahamut. But he did mutter something about heading to Ishgard, so if you're quick, you might still be able to catch him. Estinian's in, in Ishgard. <laughs> Even if we set out this instant, he may already have left by the time we arrive. Have her send the Bonanza to Ishgard. It may prove useful should we need to give chase. Gladly. I'll see to it as soon as Kryl and I get back to the Rising Stones. Good luck. While you go off on your Dragoon hunt, Urianje and I will return to headquarters. We have much to tell the others. I wish you every success in your search for our elusive friend. May we all meet again ere long. One thing I like about Fantasy of Fortune I really like is how they keep everybody relevant. All of our relationships somehow. So Stine is bound for Ishgard. Whatever it is that brings him home, we must hope that it will keep him there long enough for us to find him. Come, there is no time to lose. The foundation.
I've only visited Ishgard once before with the, after the devastation of the Eighth Umbral Calamity to see the place in, in all of its former, forgive me, if it's all original glory, is a tantalizing prospect indeed. Assuming we find him, there have been one. This will be my first encounter with the famous Sistinian, and if he's half the man Alphano claims, I fully expect to go weak at the knees. Perhaps I'll do a bit of fainting while I'm at it. I think she's saying that kind of in really nice, a. Uh, uh, what do I want to say? Um, sarcastic tone. All present? Good. Let's split up and find a Stinian. Since we're relatively new to the place, Grahan I, I will look around the open spaces, the squares and markets and whatnot. You and Eskos can delve into the Nook and the Crannies. Very well. Let us reconvene at the airship landing later, with or without the Stinian. Good luck. I think I shall begin at the Sky, sky Still Manufactory, and perhaps you can try the congregation. Lucia may well have her news of our friend's return. Got the night. Just to kind of give me a slight boost of speed. Not much, but hey, a little more. Good morning to you. While your flight, Lord Emmerich sent word that you would be attending. Be, you would be attending the meeting in El Amigo. So I gather you have not come and search for him. To what then do we owe the pleasure of your visit? Uh, looking for Estenian. I see. No, we are not aware, sir. Estenian is has returned to Ishgard, but as I expect you remember, he is wont to come and go as he pleases. May I be came seeking an audience with Lord Emmerich, only to find him absent. In any event, I can am afraid I cannot help you. Perhaps one of your companions has fared better. To the Anthem Mass Religion. So Stinian's every bit more as elusive as Orianger's suggestion. I remember this scene. No sign of him. Not that I've ever met him before, but the way Alphano goes on about him, I'm fairly sure I could pick him out in a crowd. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile Azure Dragoon had returned to Ishgard, would it not be a source of general excitement? First the Scion's coin keeper, and now you. I'm beginning to think these meetings are more than mere coincidence. Not that I'm complaining. It's been too long. Too long? You look an ilm taller and twice as rugged. It suits you, Alphano. <laughs> Quieter, though. Have you been giving him lessons on how to be the strong, silent type? Uh, I am not. No! <laughs> Get 
If the two of you are such firm friends, perhaps you should remember what he looks like. And what do you mean, rugged? Ugh! Had my brother mentioned what an oaf you are, I'd never have bothered looking for you in the first place. Estinian Wormblood. The Azure Dragoon. He who fought and felled the dread worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. <laughs> to think the day would come when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. <laughs> Someone mind explaining what is going on? <laughs> is everything all right? I thought I heard Alizé shouting. Estinian! It's been too long. No, no, it's quite understandable. That was hardly the first time we've been confused for one another. Nor, I suspect, will it be the last. Well, I for one will not be making that mistake again. What I will say, for the second time today, is that you've grown. Inside and out. I can tell. One can't remain a spoiled little lordling forever, you know. At least someone's having a good time. You know when we were growing up, Alphano would never befriend other boys because he couldn't stand the thought of not being in charge. But maybe that's changed. He seems just as happy around Astinian as he does Arenvald. Yeah, he's, he's got a thing for guys that are taller than him. Uh, I think he's learned how to talk with people rather than that. I wouldn't be so sure. He still loves nothing better than the sound of his own voice. <laughs> no rest for the righteous, eh? Speaking of which, I was just on my way to borrow an airship to take me to Azisla. Azisla? How could I forget? The dragon with whom Bahamut shared the deepest of bonds. Aye, Tiamat, his mate. Even now she remains imprisoned on Azisla, though her remorse binds her faster than any shackle. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation? Might I suggest that we make the journey to Azislar together? I'm not sure if Tataru mentioned this, but we Scions have an airship of our own now. I see no reason why not. Assuming your sister can bear the thought of sharing a deck with me. Be my guest, but confuse me with Alphano again and I'll throw you overboard. <laughs> I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's nothing like Elfano painted him to be. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt? <laughs> and I'm just like... Uh... Let's get on plans, huh? Quite a while since uh, sometimes since I last set foot in uh, Azisla, but I understand the three of you were here rather more recently. I don't suppose you chanced to meet with Tiamat during your visit. 
Last not, we have no cause to set foot here in the Delta Quadrant, but I have studied the relevant records, in which to say I wouldn't appreciate I wouldn't appreciate a first hand account of your dealings with her. Well then, as a ghost is the person to ask. As far as I know, he's the only one of us who met Tiamat face to face. I'd say it helped that Midgard Stormer was there to introduce me. Ah, oh, yes. You were the friend of her father. I, too, have met with Tiamat. After the Dragon Song War came to a close, I came here to speak with her, a worm who had fought her own war against man in another age. I wished to know if she yet harbored thoughts of vengeance and asked as such. She said no. My hatred for your kind was extinguished long ago. But the guilt she feels for resurrecting Bahamut burns as un 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 undimmed. It torments her even now. I see. Then our original reason your original reason for coming here out of concern that Tiamat has been forced to summon Bahamut. The dog is part of me. I feel his emotions as my own, and now that he would not I know that he would not allow his sister to make to be made a tool of evil. In his absence, it falls to me to watch over her. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Yeah. It was the Asians who taught Tiamat the secrets of summoning, even as they supplied the Alagans with the means to c capture primals. So much suffering, all of it by design. The Azure grew dragoons of history with the mortal enemies of the dragon, yet now they were hard pressed to find a soul who understood them better. Our grandfather sacrificed everything to protect the realm from Bahamut. We must be prepared to do the same. Tiamat awaits this way. Actually, hold on. I just think it's probably more appropriate. To bring the Midgard Sword. Fly on a dragon when we're going to talk to a dragon. think that man is responsible for all this and so much else that dragonkind has suffered. Resigned to her fate, though she may be, I cannot help but feel that she may be able to help we may be able to help Tiamat, would she only let us. So this is one of the great the seven great worms. Even thus confined her presence is overwhelming. Hey Tiamat, how you been doing? My sire's mortal champion, what brings thee back to this forsaken place, child of man? <laughs> it's plain she knows naught of recent events. Perhaps you should enlighten her. Exposition. Hmm. 
Much like those held here in Asisla. If dragons who worship Bahamut are required to summon him, that must mean. Es Your children's pain means nothing to them. They laugh at your kind suffering. But tears will not right this wrong, nor will lamentation see the perpetrators punished. Snosk Dramon. What wouldst thou have of me, Slayer of Dragons? Behavior befitting a great worm. We came here to ask mighty Tiamat of the First Brood, consort of Bahamut, mother of the dragons of Maracidia, what she intends to do about the crimes committed against her children. You two were exposed to his influence. That you are yet in possession of your own will is testament to the indomitable strength of your soul. But were you to meet with Bahamut again, you fear you might succumb. Yes. On the matter of Bahamut's influence, at least, I believe we can be of some assistance. If you're afraid of being enthralled, don't be. We have a cure. And while we've never tried it on one such as you, its basic principles are universal. Usk, she's in. Speakest thou in earnest? There is no future for those bound to the past. That you committed a terrible sin, I do not dispute. 
But if you feel remorse, you may yet make amends. We offer you that chance. Take it, or you will forever remain a prisoner. Not of these cruel shackles, but of your own guilt. Sahaban said so in Mahamud's hand. Poxis have been shown to be effective in curing the temper, Tiamat may be considered a special case. She is far, far larger and measurably more powerful than any subject treated thus far. Were we to remove her restraints only to find that the process has failed, we would be hard pressed to contain her. Then, before we go ahead, we should learn as much as we can about the exact nature of her condition. Do you suppose you can find that information here? Why, yes, we can. We can indeed. The elegants kept detailed records on all their notable captors and know exactly where to look. We shall leave that to you. Then, in the meantime, the rest of us will turn our attention to the removal of those shackles. I know Alphano and Essa goes here well enough, but not you. Are you certain you're ready to see this through? Rest assured, Sir Stinin, that I am both ready and willing to give you all my all for the sake of this star, though it is not my only reason for wanting to set Tiamat free. While I do not claim to know all of her sorrows, I too once found myself in a prison of despair, and I well understood how hard it can be to, de can be to dare to dream of escape. It took the encouragement of a braver soul than I am to make, make me take the first steps to a brighter future, and now I would help Tiamat do the same. I gather you're not as young as you look. Mayhap when our work here is done, we can tell, trade tales over a pot of Tartaru's famous tea. And be indebted to her for the leaves and, and hot water? I think not. I see. <laughs> Turning swiftly to the task at hand, then. I believe the nodes covering Tiamat's restraints are located in the sector known as the Flagship. Ah, yes, we are familiar with that, the Aether Chemical Research Facility in particular. Oh, you may wish to take this, a spirit vessel, containing a small amount of my blood. Which you just happen to be carrying around with you? I suppose it would seem rather odd. To explain, Rembrandt, Orianger, and I are researching the use of spirit vessels in the transference not only of memories but the traits of certain bloodlines, and so I keep, my, keep one at the ready should an opportunity to test our theories arise. As for its use to you, you may recall that during your, our previous visit, the nodes here granted access to restricted functions which identified me as being of royal blood, and armed with that spirit vessel, I posit that they will do the same for you, even in the absence of, well, the rest of me. Seem worth a try, at least. Agreed. We will take good care of it. To the flagship, then.
did this two expansions ago. We hopped on Midgard Stormer and... Flew to the flagship. I would rather leave these elegant contra contraptions to you and Alpha now. It is split up in search of flagship for the node that controls Tiamat's for strength. And should you find a likely candidate, do not be tempted to make any adjustments. It would not be due to accidentally release some manner of experimental monstrosity, nor less Tiamat herself in her current state. Our objective at this stage is simply to identify the relevant node or nodes. Once we have learned what we can, we could, should reconvene and compare notes prior to proceeding. These nodes, or whatever you call them, why do they quiver so? The amount I was looking for. Little you know, friction between metallic components detected. Temperature increasing to critical levels. Please replace damaged parts or retreat to a safe distance. Little Nadal link with Delta Quadrant broken. Possible cause intruder interference. Advised deployment of automated combat units. Proceed. Glamorous note. Good morning. Schedule dragon resist uh, restraint maintenance due in negative 2020 years. Failure to verify system integrity may result in unscheduled specimen release. Yeah, I think I found it. Final things. One of them sent a swarm of tentacle Valkin to plague me. I must have angered it. I'm afraid of Sydney and I had little to show with our efforts. Did you find anything? Um, uh, Chirupi node which spontaneously warned me about neglecting the dragon restraints. Spontaneously, you say? Well, that does sound promising. Almost surprising. Suspiciously so, in fact. But then we are in possession of the spirit vessel. You are, you were in possession of the spirit vessel. Hmm, dare say it is indeed the node of which Graha spoke. As for its, uh, Chirupi, say? Uh, very well, let us take a closer look. Do you wish to operate the Dragon Restraints mechanism? You do not have the requisite access privileges. Operation of the Dragon Restraint Mechanism may only be undertaken by the Chief Technologist and members of the Royal Family. Or those with a vessel full of royal blood, perhaps. New user detected commencing biometric authentication. Nope. Authorization complete. User identified member of the royal family. Please state your name. Well, welcome, Mexico. So when small, you can operate the dragon restraint mechanism when ready.
were unable to disengage restraints of the specimen Tiamat. The system update is required. A system update? What do you suppose it is asking of us? You could hazard I could hazard, yes. Well, that's more than I can say. Confirm plenty thing. User agitation detected. Initiating guidance program. In order to operate the restraint mechanism, I require access to the central control system. However, I am unable to establish a link to said system due to the obsolescence of my own software. This issue can be resolved by applying a system update using the corresponding terminal located within the flagship. So can this thing release the restraints or not? It can, but only once it's received its requisite system update, as far as I can tell. Until which time it will float there spewing nonsense. User satisfaction detected initiation pla <laughs> placation protocols. <laughs> I am here to help. Please rest assured that I will be on hand to guide you through every step of the system update process. How oh, gratifying, but I dare say we'll fare better with, with guidance than without it. I don't know what possessed the elegants to surround themselves with these chattering orbs, but the fact that they remain within it while their creators do not speaks volumes. Sid and his colleagues always always make operating these elegant devices seem so easy. We're dying user to terminal this way, please. Access granted to user as it goes when small it is uh, <laughs> this adolescent Ellison companion. Master Winspall's other companion is deemed a potential risk to safe operations and has been denied access privileges until further notice. <laughs> I don't think it's the need really cares. Look at me. This is a task for you and Alphano. The terminal appears to be similar to the one we encountered when we first set foot here. Let us hope it is equally helpful. Let's see, according to the terminal, the the central controls system is presently employing software version 561.135. Dare I ask which version you are employing? My Software version 442.002, of course. Leap bloop warning errors detected in the da data management system. Estimated time re required for update five years, one day. It is rather longer than we were hoping for. Are there any other options? For instance, using this terminal to operate DML3 strains instead. The proposed method is indeed an option. Please be warned, however that the procedure may have changed as a result of the system update. My instructions may no longer be accurate. Well, can't imagine we have changed all that much, as long as we pay due attention to any discrepancies. I dare say we'll be even able to muddle our way through. Don't bother trying to explain. Just tell me if, you were, if we've made any progress. I would say so, yes. It does, however, require that I remain here to operate the terminal. I shall inform you via Lupo once I'm ready to release the shackles. It might be best if you left the spirit vessel with me. I may yet have use of it. Rest assured, I'll be certain to return it to Grahatia here yeah, once this is over. Just a little more work and Tiamat will be free. But before we go any further, there is something I would know. 
When Tiamat and her kin fought against the Allegan Empire, but both sides were both dancing to the tune of the Asians. But it was the same in Ishgard, where they stoked the fires of conflict between men and dragons from the shadows. All that the Asians touched burns to ash, and thus have you made it our, your mission to fight them. But there have been many times when you tried to reach out to them instead, to find common ground. And so I must ask, do you intend, what do you intend to do with Van Daniel? Will you try and reach out to him too? Uh, certainly, after I wipe the smile off his face. <laughs> I'd rather put my lens through his heart and be done with it. But perhaps that's the difference between you and me. You see the good in people, even if it be, be but the faintest glimmer. I only hope you do not come to ru ruin your benevolence. You think us un unwise with you in the world, thus? Far from it. It has ever been your way, and I've learned and I learned when you were journeying together with Isaac. Yet the fact remains that there's some who view compassion as a weakness to be exploited, and there may come a time when you extend the hand of friendship only to wish that you had dealt the killing blow. So, save your mercy for those who deserve it. Well, we should be getting back to our task. If Alfredo has things in hand here, I suggest we rejoin the others. Better look at Team Up. So the spear is also proved useful after all. Excellent. If this Van Daniel truly is without reason or creed, he is no better than a rabid dog. Treat with him if you must, but be ready to do what is necessary. Alright, Alize, see what we can do. Stenian told, told me all is well, but nothing more. Honestly, it's like getting blood out of a stone from him. I take it from Alphano's absence that he's needed elsewhere. Exposition. Well, that all sounds rather frustrating, but we got there, there in the end. While you were off talking to nodes, Graha and I have learned as much as we could about Tiamat's condition. Our readings confirm that her ethereal balance needs, lead, needs strongly towards the umbral, as was the case of the kobolds. Therefore, all other things being equal, the treatment should work. The difficulty lies in the sheer quantity of ether in which we must contend. Multiple applications of the treatment will inevitably be required if we are to reverse effect the temporary completely. Meaning, I'll need all the ether I can get. Thank you in advance. Though this endeavor will ask much of us, we do have one reason to be optimistic. Namely, that Tiamat shows no sign of fanatical devotion regarding a milder case of tempering than that suffered by the kobolds. Hmm. Tiamat saw Bahamut as an eagle rather than a god. Might that have made a difference? Now that you mention it, it, m it very well might. She would not have believed it necessary to defer to his will. But enough talk. It's time to put... Our theories to the proof. Tell Alphano to disengage the 
the restraints ethereal dampeners. I'm counting on you, Angelo. Ah, such warmth of frost that shroudeth my soul doth begin to thaw. But what are these? Visions of days long forgotten, of war with the men of Alec. Wherefore do such baleful memories return to me now? Could it be that the process of throwing his soul to its pre stempered state are awakening ancient memories? Or might the opposite be true? If so, by helping her to recall the past, we might be able to speed her recovery. As a ghost, she trusts you. Speak with her. Ask her to tell you of time's past. Tell me about Bahamut now. I see it. Ah, Bahamut, my beloved. Would that the peace we found in Mercidia could have lasted for eternity. But alas, it was not to be. The Asians saw to that. In all creation I know of none more wicked. It was at their behest that the men of Aleg first came to Mercidia, unto our home. The tale began when Bahamut and I left our father's side. We took wing in search for a place to make our airy. Beyond the southern ocean we discovered a lush and fertile land. It would be come to be known as Meristidia by the children of men, though many years would pass before they crossed the seas. Upon our arrival we were welcomed by the peaceful people of the forest, the kin of the trees. Surrounded by nature's bounty, Bahamut and I found a place to raise our young. Fascinating. This correlates with the writings of the Shardians scholar Rusha. She posits that men first settled in the southern continent towards the end of the second astral era. Correctly, it would appear, if only she were with us to hear the tale from Tiamat herself. Again, Angelo. In fact, the children and men arrived on our shores. No foot did they set in, set in their, those places over which we held dominion. Such was their fear of dragon kind, and as they kept their distance, so did we let them be. Yet as the days went by, ship after ship arrived, appeared upon the horizon, bearing ever more of their brethren, who divided the vast land amongst themselves. For a time they knew peace and prosperity, but as their numbers grew, the smaller their share came to seem, and soon they began to covet the territory of their fellows. Ere long men fought men, blood was answered with blood, and none would see an end to the strife, until one day they came to us. Recognizing our wisdom, they entreated us to intercede in their conflicts. Bahamut agreed, and with him presiding over the affairs of man. Men, the land knew peace once more. Alas, those golden days of harmony too were fated to end, for the men of Aleg slew my beloved, and I, in my rage and sorrow, heeded the venom words of the Asians. The rest thou knowest only too well. But your tale doesn't have to end, end there. When you are free, we will rid the world of the Asians together, and you and your beloved will have justice. Fine sentiments, but you are almost spent. I'll keep watch from above. If the treatment fails, run. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence. I swear. When this is over. Keep going, Alize. The magic is working. Uh, well, I knew this was going 
wasn't going to be easy. No patient, no patient could have prepared me for treating a great worm. But we're close. I can feel it. And while I've only got a few more drops of ether left in me, with yours and Grahas, this will work. Then I believe I speak with the both of us when I say that you can take as much as you require. Careful. I might hold you to that. Right. Here I go. Don't know for certain until the shackles are removed. Many have been subjected to the Allegan's dark arts. Their flesh irrevocably altered. For such tortured souls, I fear there can be no salvation. Than live as a tool for you. One you wish this, I know. And I shall be with my When that time comes, you won't be alone. We'll stand by you. She's in her has my gratitude. Alphano's ready. It's time. Do it. And let's hope the treatment worked as it should. Oh, 
Grionje, your timing could not be better. Understood, we're on our way. It's Bahamut. He's been sighted over Pagalthan. He flies for the largest amount of settlement in the region, at the head of a vast host, including dragons. Did you hear all that, Alpha? No. You'd best rejoin your comrades. I'll make my own way. Our enemy awaits. Shall we? to gather the strength of the science first. The foe we face, let's go this. Navarri sent word to the others. We will rendezvous in Orda with the Hall of Flames. Let us collect Alpha and be on our way. transition quickly. Nope. Probably should have talked to the others, but... Now I know some of you could do with some rest, but I'm sorry to say the Telophorae have their own plans. Pegalthon is already under siege. Happily, the Immortal Flames arrived just in time to save the defensive vessel, with Marshal Terrapin at their head. Honey! Well now, given the failure of the peace negotiations, I was uncertain how the Sultanate would respond. It is good to hear that Uldar is not abandoned the Amorja. Abandoned them? Then did we not profess to be their friends? Your Grace. Marshal Tarapin has, has made provisions with such an extendency it was made to depart at a moment's notice. All that was required was the agreement of the Syndicate, each of whom voted in favour of intervention. Nor is Alda alone in this resolve. The other Alliance stations have otherwise dispatched their troops to Pegalthon. Yet even with our combined strength we sh shall be sorely tested, for we face not only the might of the Imperial Legion, but Luna Bahamut and his draconic hordes besides. Dear Moth's children. Fight as we may, victory is by no means so sad. Should, but not all of the omens are grim. Our forces report that despite their proximity to Luna Bahamut, none of the Amalta show any signs of tempering. Strange, would a primal would turn down a chance to claim more new thralls. Unless it is incapable of doing so. Primals are not one to serve a master. Assians or otherwise, it would seem to be that Luna Bahamut differs in some fundamental manner of those we have previously encountered. If that were true, anyone could fight them. And Essigos and others like him wouldn't have to shoulder the burden alone. Be that as it may, Luna Bahamut remains an incalculably powerful foe from whom our soldiers will struggle to best best through mere force of arms. 
With the aid of the science, however, I believe we'll fare, fare far better, assuming, that is, you are ready to take the field. An airship awaits to bear you to the front. Pray set forth as soon as you are able. I, meanwhile, shall continue to coordinate our forces. Till next we meet, may the Twelve bless and keep you. It was kind of her to speak with us personally. You may be certain she has no shortage of other responsibilities. Well, I for one am inclined to do as her grace requests. Lest we forget, our involvement for Dola and Pegathon's reconnaissance. The sooner we save the day, the better their chances. Indeed, to the airship then. I have to remember a few things, but I think. The fastest way to the airship landing is by taking the A3. Airship. Well, let's see. Let's actually speak to everybody first. Lest thou wonder, I have attended to Thancred's ammunition and completed mine own preparations. I trust thou canst say the same of thine. Try as I might, I cannot fathom why the Tullofroi would move to attack the Amulja. If Van Daniel's objective is death and destruction, one of the city-states would surely have been a better target. No, they must they have some other agenda, one encompassing the true abductions, perhaps. Do you think Estimi and Tiamat have already reached Pegathon? Ah, but sh but I should know better than to speculate on the whereabouts of the Azure Dragoon. Forgive me. It is not impossible that the Talofra re redirected some of the troops stationed at the, at the tower to the front line. If so, this would be all turned out to have been, in, been to Ehrenfeld's and Fordola's benefit. Given what we know, some, or perhaps even all, of the Imperial soldiers have been tempered. If we can subdue them, we'd be able to do something about that, but they would still see us as enemies even then. That said, we, they wouldn't be deaf to reason, which is better than nothing. So the Talafroi are constructing buildings capable of tempering and primals, which are not. What secrets are they hiding? Greens, we've been expecting you. To say the word, we shall depart for Pegathon at once. Bong. I stand ever ready. Yeah, we're going to do this. Tiamat. As you vermin, you shall torment my children no longer. Make sure we fire stance and let's get going. This is actually kind of fun to do when we, um, I, mean, I actually have like player characters too. It is crazy, I will say that for sure.
So we're doing this is more leisurely story trust based here. Mainly to ensure quite quick queue. Although I think that it's the queues for Peggle Bomb is actually pretty pretty quick. Comparatively speaking. Because I, I will tell you this, when, when doing this... Normally, we basically uh, group up a whole bunch of them and the uh, fast area down. But, because for some strange reason, the trust... Uh, just are incapable of doing AoEs. We have to do this a little bit slower. That's okay. I find it's probably better than seeing just a scratch up version of this, but that's okay. We'll, we'll do it. more relaxed. And smell the chili I have cooking.
Good work, as always. Alright, Paul and Erdy. Mirror City and Dragon. You don't give, him, give me much room for, uh... Oh, oh man! Come on! The Azure Dragoon. The amount are in trouble. Let's split up.
We got Lucia and Emmerich. No, Emmerich and Lucia. Kill the mage! Was there a... Oh no, you don't. Somewhere? I gotta make sure I'm watching for chess. Is it, people always like run through this part and I'm like, you know what probably would be best? Just get rid of these two so that the next pack we have two less that we're dealing with. I gotta, gotta watch for chests. Because I think the gear here is an upgrade to what I have. There we go, this is a chest. Ooh. Alright, is that an upgrade? It's not an upgrade. Well, I was wrong. Maybe it's an upgrade to some of my other specs. up here. That's the way it's true, it's like the...
I will call upon my children. Yeah, God waiteth in the heavens, my children shall bear thee to him.
Teletarim, Lunar Bahamut. His face looks weird. Time to face Dinner Bahamut. Where Alize can take it.
There we go. Good job, Graha. Alphano and Elise. And I also finished uh, one of my things with my Winter's Tales, which I haven't worked on. I think this has some BO. <laughs> chose their friends well. Long have our peoples waged war, but no more. Your fallen lie beside our own. By our words and deeds, shall we honor their sacrifice. Well, and let us put the path behind us. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. And you have proven yourselves worthy of our trust. It is the Garleans who are deserving of our fury. I shall see that my brethren learn the truth of this day, and rally as many as possible to the cause, till we meet again. And thus did we make allies of the Amalja. It would certainly seem that way. The Sultana will be pleased. Let's go and give her the good news, shall we? Meanwhile, sometime earlier, inside the Pagathon Tower. in Ralga's name happened here? The gods only know. But you can bet these poor sods aren't here by choice. Quickly! We've got to get them free!
No. What have I done? It's too late for them. We're leaving. Now. together and we're leaving together. Oh boy. The city of the house is alongside us. What's going to be soon? Get the side. We pray that our people can forge bonds as strong as those of our counterparts in the first. From what I could tell, there doesn't, didn't seem to be any many Imperials in the vicinity of the tower. Hopefully, all of them will have used the opportunity to get in and to get the And she about the did, or she promised them both this day, but I doubt she will be satisfied. They should fight on in defense of each other, wherever they are. We will be able to take more of them. Victory to wash away all the bad blood between men and the mold, but one has to stop something. Though the day has won, thanks to no small part of our power, that the awful I have far from defeated. Yet be that as it may, it is only right that we rejoice in the good upon its banishment to the ether. While it would be too much of a hope that we would had seen the last of Fandang, we have dealt the, the schemes a telling blow this day, and that alone is cause to celebrate. And celebrate I will, when we have received word of our uninvolved state of affairs. Studying around here wearing is not going to make matters. Come, we have to discuss the event, today's events with Pippin and her grace. Brave science. Brave science. With that I could treat you to a hero's welcome, but I bear urgent news from the Fontestry. Your grace, what is the matter? As our troops withdrew from Pagelthorn, they came across the two scouts sent to the nearby tower. I have yet to hear a full account, but it seems that one of them, your friend, I believe, has been wounded and has been dragged away by the other. Oh no. I, I must go. Uh, forgive me, Your Grace. Can't you all, uh, all tell us of the condition your, of our involved condition, Your Grace? The wounded scout. Not safe, that is grave. The Kyrugians uh, tend to him even as we speak. The infirmary must be un inundated with the wounded. If all of us go, we'll only be underfoot. As goes, Sistinian, would you mind going after our involved? He may need some. S or Alf Alfredo, he may need some support from someone other than me. Very well. Thank you. The rest of us will see that the Abredovan people know what, what took place in Pagelthon.
Come now and then. Well, the street is conveniently placed near the alchemist guild, you know, where they can make medicines. Another one to come see the lad in silver armor, Master Damaloi, is attending to me as we speak, if you'd be so kind as to wait. What did Master Damaloi say? Uh, tell me his exact words. Let, let the Chirurgians do their work. But, you're right, forgive me. When we said our farewells to Alphano, I was afraid that something like this might happen, but now that it has, all we can do is wait. For Dola. Have you been waiting here all this time? We have done what we can. The rest is up to him. May we see him? I do not think that wise. You must let him sleep. Thank you for bringing him back. He owes you his life. I just... I, I just wish I had been there. Perhaps... Uh, I don't know. Perhaps I could have... Could have what? Got tempered? Don't flatter yourself. You can't save everyone. No one can. Not even the warrior of bloody light. People die all the time. For no good reason. And those who take up the sword die quicker than most. If you're going to shed a tear every time a soldier falls on the battlefield, you'd best stay away. It's no place for the weak of heart. It may be that victory cannot be won without cost. But all life is precious, and I refuse to shrug at its loss. Precious! <laughs> oh, you need to grow up, little man. Before your sparkling ideals get everyone killed. You're right. He is idealistic. But the world has more than its fair share of realists, like you and me. It's people like him who dare to dream that things could be better and make it happen against all the odds. They are the ones whose names live on forever. The heroes. The battlefield's littered with would-be heroes. At this rate, you lot will be next. And what will become of your precious dreams then? 
They'll be gone. Like dust on the wind. Dreams worth fighting for don't die so easily. There's nothing more I can do. Come, I'll just join the others. Uh, her Grace of White Society and Sith sent on to join her in the fragrant chamber. The comrades have already arrived. Will the three of you be joining them? We will. Pray forgive us our lateness. Think not of that. I understand a close comrade of yours was wounded in the line of duty. Arunvold. It was at the Alliance's behest that he risked all, and we are grieved to hear of his condition. Rest assured, he will receive the finest care our chirurgeons can provide. On that you have my word. Now, we would share with you the findings of the mission. Pippin, pray relate to our guests the details of Fordola's account. Exposition. First Bahamut, now Ifrit. Or Luna Ifrit, as Fan Daniel would doubtless have it. Tis now all but certain that the towers were conceived to facilitate the summoning of primals by those imprisoned within. Less certain is the means by which the Telophoroi constrain the wills of said entities to enact their designs in defiance of the pleas of their victims. Mayhap they do not. If mere proximity to the towers is enough to make loyal servants of the Empire's mortal enemies, it stands to reason that the same is true for those held captive. They invoke their gods for the good of Garlemald, and in their disturbed state of mind, summon a primal whose form reflects their own alteration. It all begins to make sense. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the towers bear a striking resemblance to a much larger structure which Uriange and I observed from afar during our visit to the Imperial capital. Assuming it too is capable of tempering those in its immediate vicinity, it would go some way to explain the swiftness with which the Telophoroi managed to rally so many Imperials to their cause. While the situation in Garlemald is indeed troubling, I fear we have more immediate concerns. Ifrit was not the only primal summoned. At approximately the same time, observers at several other towers bore witness to the emergence of further such entities. For a blessing, None appear to wield aught approaching the destructive power of Bahamut, and the Grand Companies are moving to deal with the threat even as we speak. You don't even tell me where to go, Your Grace.
Though we are aware that the task will not be easy, we would call upon the Scions only as a last resort. Pray, conserve your strength for now. After all, it was not so very long ago that you rid us of Bahamut. On which note, I am pleased to report that our talks with the Amalja have reached an agreeable conclusion. They have pledged their full support to our cause. It is our hope that this historic agreement will encourage other tribes to join us at the negotiating table. And I know that I speak for all of the Allied leaders when I say that we will welcome them with open arms at such time as they do. Of course, this was only made possible by the feats of heroism performed at Pagelfarn. Moreover, we shall not allow the sacrifices of those fallen in battle to have been made in vain. As hope leads to victory, shall victory lead to a new dawn for Eorzea. May these words ever be our guide, Your Grace. Now, if you will forgive me, I must consult with the Syndicate on the matter of our new ally's integration. Till next we meet, my friends, I bid you safe travels and blessed respite. Right then, unless anyone has any objections, I think it's about time we return to the Rising Stones. And that includes you, Alf, now. Our involved is in good hands here. Of course, he, he would no doubt mock me for, place, for pacing about the infirmary. Let us retire then, and we sh might regain our strength and readiness for the coming challenges. Follow our agreement then, I shall let Kryle know to expect us. Hot bath and a hearty meal would be so, uh, shouldn't be beyond arranging with, about the, with the time available. It will be good to be home. I have some thinking to do. Yes, I'll try asking him. And thank you. I shall look forward to it. Our comrades eagerly await our return, and Kral in particular has a few matters he would need to discuss, one of which concerns you, Westinian. Believe it or not, you will join us, won't you? Fine. Really? I thought you said you would avoid that Baldassian woman. If I were sued, she would only pursue me. <laughs> Let us get this over with, shall we? <laughs> I love this Dinian. Uh oh, rising stones. Off to Mordona. Welcome back. I expect you must all be exhausted. 
Ere you take your rest, however, I would beg a moment of your time. Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings, and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophoroi's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. It is possible the ancient knowledge preserved within their archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non-intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's barefaced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the Calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. But were the final days to be reenacted, it would spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary, and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If there are no objections, I shall depart for Charlian at once. But before I do, I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing. A topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? Near the end of the dream. When you regained her blessing, was it not? But never since, not in all your time in the first, when you faced the unsundered, the very heart of Zodiac. History shows us that Heidelin is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. Mayhap she is, but following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own, and as far as I am able to tell, Heidelin has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the First, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reen. But that was not the will of Heidelin. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed, and while she and Heidelin were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder, could Heidelin's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? Some obstacle to communication? While I share Urianger's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlian, and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Resolved though I am to go, 
Believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we Scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so I must ask you again, will you join us? You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the lie to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief. In Ishgard. In Alamigo. You inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. But you bear it willingly, as you have shown me. Some dreams are too important to let go. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. <laughs> and now, I may bid you farewell. Safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be. In this little corner of the world, at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian, and do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. I shall do my very best. Farewell. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace... A strewn of weapons are on the floor. Well, does this one meet with your approval? Apparently not. Or could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? You are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. It will not affect our plans, I trust. Oh, hardly at all. Though, admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merosidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. Oh, but the seeds have been sown, my lord! We have only to wait for them to quicken! Speaking of preparations, 
Is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you know what? The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. <laughs> A mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Well, well, not quite what I was expecting, though I will say, it does seem rather apt. appearance of the towers will surely not have escaped the forum's notice. I would like to think that they would be receptive to the crowd's request for cooperation investigating the matter. But unfortunately, their reputation would suggest otherwise. It strikes me as odd that rather than marching in one of these city-states, the Telophory would have, have so far made only sporadic attacks. I doubt they would go to the trouble to uphold those towers if that was all they would have had in store for us. Though we would not, we, we know not the full extent of the Talafroy schemes, preventing further abductions must take precedence above all else, for there lies the, lieth the key to depriving our enemy of the most potent weapon. None can deny that Hydaelyn's blessing has been a great boon to our cause, but much remains unknown with regard to her true intentions. Given everything we have learned from your encounters with the Asians, we must keep our minds open to any and all possibilities. Amidst all the fighting, it's easy to forget what we achieved as we procure Tiamat. Tiamat, for heaven's sakes. We will, we will tell you if I become insufferably smart, won't you? Because the way things are going, I feel like that's a possibility. Looks like I'll be going to, to have a busy few minutes. Well, I'll bet that they haven't seen to be anything but. Tancred's got me dispatching troops to every corner of the realm, which is not to say I don't trust the Alliance, because I do, but when it comes to putting down primals, nobody does it better than us. Well, then you not more accurately. Well, catch me trading blows with primal in the near future. But for every fell field we vanquish, there's countless meals to arrange, bass to fill, the sheets to wash, stores to replenish, and the list goes on. Which is where I come in, and gladly mind you, is the least I can do to support the science who risk life and limb, my poor Alan Ah, I wish there was something I could do for him, but he's just have to settle for saying the old prayer and keeping a roof over our heads. Wouldn't do to have him come back to a complete shambles now, would it? But that's enough of my rambling. Off you go and get some rest. If there are any developments, I promise you'll be the first to know. And a good, like, uh, hour, a little over two and a half hours. That was nice. Uh, I'm going to uh, cut the stream, uh, refill that bridge. Stretch a little, uh, check out my chili that I'm making, which should be done in about uh, But I 
I'll be back very, very soon. Taking a little break. So, follow, get notifications when I come back. Uh, or just stay here. I'll be back. See you in a bit. <laughs>